let's control the size of sequences. I want some terminology, some language for us to be able to talk about sequences that uh, don't get too big or don't get too negative. The word that we'll be using is bounded. Let me give a precise definition. So precisely, to say that a sequence is bounded above means that there's some real number m, that's the bound, so that for any index, that term in the sequence is no bigger than m. We can think about this graphically. Well, here's the graph of some sequence. Each of these dots represents a term in the sequence, and the height of the dot represents the value of that particular term. And I've positioned these terms in sort of a compressed way. You'll notice that my labels here on the n axis aren't all equally spaced, right? I'm squishing them together over here so I can fit the entire future of this sequence on a single sheet of paper. Now the sequence is bounded, and what that really means is that these terms never exceed some bounding value. Here I've picked some value m, no term of the sequence is above this horizontal line. This horizontal line is representing an upper bound for this sequence. I can also bound a sequence from below, meaning that the sequence doesn't become too negative. To say that a sequence is bounded below means that there's some real number m, that's the bound, so that for any index n, the nth term in the sequence is no smaller than that bound m. Sometimes a sequence will be bounded both from above and from below. Well, in that case, we just say that the sequence is bounded. So a sequence is bounded exactly when it's bounded both above and below. Now, it's worth pointing out that the definition for bounded below involves a number m, and the definition for bounded above includes a number m, but it's very unlikely that the upper bound and the lower bound are the same. Of course, they could be the same, right, if the sequence is just the constant sequence. But in general, a uh, bounded sequence is going to have a different upper bound and lower bound. So we've got our precise definitions. Now it'll be fun to make up some sequences and try to figure out whether those sequences are bounded. For example, let's think about this sequence. The sequence a sub n is sine of n. Is this sequence bounded above, bounded below, bounded, neither bounded above nor below? Well, let's think about it. What do we know about sine? Sine, no matter what I plug into sine, it's no bigger than one, and it's no smaller than minus one. Consequently, the sequence is bounded above by one and bounded below by minus one. This is an upper bound, this is a lower bound for that sequence. And since the sequence is bounded both above and below, I can just write that the sequence is bounded. Now you don't want to get the idea that this one and this minus one are the only choices for upper and lower bounds. I mean, I could also say that the sequence is bounded above by 17. That would be accurate to say. Uh, so there's lots of choices here for this, for this upper bound. But in any case, in this example, the sequence is bounded. The sequence sine of n is bounded. Let's do another example. So let's look at a sequence. Uh, b sub n is n times sine of pi times n over 2. Is this sequence bounded above, bounded below, bounded, neither bounded above nor below? Well, how can we think about this? Well, this is sine of pi times a whole number over 2. What are the possible values for this sine term? Well, this thing could be 0. It could also be 1. It could also be minus 1. And there'll be very large inputs, very large n, for which sine of pi times n over 2 is 1. And for those very large inputs, b sub n is just n times 1. There'll be other very large inputs for which sine of pi times n over 2 is negative 1. And for those very large inputs, b sub n is going to be negative n. So that means that this sequence isn't bounded above and it isn't bounded below. It's neither bounded above nor below. Then I can write out a more formal argument. Let me try to write out a, a formal argument that this sequence is not bounded above. But to make that argument precise, I'm going to try to convince you that it's not bounded above by m, but I'm not going to tell you what m is. So I'm going to try to write down an argument 
that shows it can't be bounded above by m. And since it can't be bounded above by an arbitrary m, it's just not bounded above. There's no upper bound. So how do I know that this sequence isn't bounded above by m? Well, the trick is to pick some, uh, some other number. I'm going to pick some number that looks like this. 1 followed by a whole bunch of zeros followed by a 1. But I want to pick that number so that it's bigger than your purported upper bound. And let's call that number big N. So no matter what m you pick, I can find a whole number like this, 1 followed by a bunch of zeros followed by a 1, which is bigger than m. Now what do I know about b sub big N? Well, this is n times sine of pi times big N over 2. But if you think about it a bit, sine of a number like this times pi over 2 is 1. So for this particular value of big N, b sub n is just n times 1. It's just n. But what do I know about big N? Big N is bigger than m. So that means that b sub n is bigger than m. But that means that m can't be an upper bound. Big M can't be the big M that appears in the definition of bounded above. And because this sequence isn't bounded above by an arbitrary big M, it's just not bounded above. There's no choice of M for which this sequence can be said to be bounded above by M. That might seem too formal. Let's try to do some numeric calculations just to get a sense of what's going on here. But numerically, what's going on here? Well, b sub 1 is 1 times sine of pi over 2. That's just 1. b sub 2 is 2 times sine of 2 times pi over 2, which is sine of pi, which is 0. It's just 0. b sub 3 is 3 times sine of pi times 3 over 2. Sine of pi times 3 over 2 is minus 1. So b sub 3 is minus 3. Well, how do the rest of the terms go? Let me just start writing them out. So 1 is the first term. 0 is the next term. Minus 3 is the next term. If I plug in 4 for n, I get 0. If I plug in 5, I get 5. If I plug in 6, I get 0. If I plug in 7, I get minus 7. If I plug in 8, I get 0. If I plug in 9, I just get 9. If I plug in 10, I get 0. If I plug in 11, I get minus 11. And it keeps on going. Every other term is 0, and the non-zero terms are flip-flopping in sign, in S-I-G-N. So 1, 5, 9, and the next term 13 are all positive, but negative 3, negative 7, negative 11, and so on. These, are, these terms are negative. So this sequence isn't bounded above, and it isn't bounded below. If I go far enough out in the sequence, I can find terms that are very positive. And if I go far enough out in the sequence, I can find terms that are very negative.